Oh, it's still going. Hey, oh reminder, my God. the Black Friday special is still going on. Maps Anabolic, 50% off. Maps Prime, 50% off. Maps Anabolic is our foundational Sliced in half. workout program. Maps Prime is a program that teaches you what you need to do before your workouts, regardless of what your workouts look like, to give you better recruitment patterns and better results. Both of those programs, half off. That sale sale is still going on. It ends on the 26th. Go to Mind Pump Media. Sunday night. Mindpumpmedia.com. If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, for the first 25 minutes, Justin, Adam, and myself, see I'm doing it correct every time now because I made it fun of, so uh, we do our typical intro fun You're conversation. Better mad than me. I would do it, I fuck it up on purpose. I know. Just, I just keep doing it just because it drives somebody crazy. Somebody just because it something. drives the grammar police yeah, fucking yeah. crazy. Me, Adam, and Justin. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Uh, so we start off and we have our good conversation. First, I talk about my busted ankle and how that is making my neck hurt. Oh man, I'm not being a wuss. You're I just, promise. Yeah, we You're talk about broken. Justin's uh, broken right arm, yeah. uh, and his I went uh, through it, and the nail that went through his foot and gave him the flesh eating bacteria. It was scary. Sucked. We talk about spanking children. Those bad kids. <laughs> <laughs> parenting mistakes. Oh, parenting falls right follows right after. Oh man, <laughs> and how parenting shaped our lives and the trauma. <laughs> that we maybe forever that we had as yeah, children. Uh, we also open our Thrive Market surprise. Check it out. Package. We do this new uh, segment where Doug orders us surprise stuff from Thrive Market. I really, really yeah. like this. It's a great way to do a commercial. Uh, they are our sponsor. Um, if you go to thrivemarket.com forward slash mind pump, here is what you will get you'll get one month of free membership. You'll get twenty dollars off your first three orders of forty nine dollars or more, and you'll get free shipping. And then we get into the questions of the episode. The first question was, why do we think women are typically more susceptible to body distortion and eating disorders? So first off, are women more susceptible? And second off, if they are, why do we think that is? The next question is, if you're not eating in a surplus or a deficit and you're going through excellent exercise programming like in MAPS Anabolic, Technically, are you gaining or losing weight? So, like, what's going on here? Are you building? Mm. Are you not? You don't have extra calories. You're not eating less than you're burning. What's going on there? Or we, is it a wash? We talk a lot about signaling and how that uh, alone can actually cause changes in your body. So, it's an inter- interesting discussion in that question. The next question was, are there any opportunities that we see in the fitness plan market now that bodybuilding.com is selling the workout plan? So, Bodybuilding.com used to give out their free workout plans. I can't wait to see what they put out. They were all crap. Yeah. But now they're selling them. Feels like they're kind of uh, hustling a little bit. Uh, maybe because mm. Amazon is killing them in the supplement game. Oh, anyway, man. we talk about it in that uh, in this episode. And then the final question, who are our top three dream podcast guests? So we kind of make a list of who our dream people are that Leave we would love. Leave it to Justin to steal my guy. To yeah. interview had to, uh, had to do it. Yeah, for our show. Also, we're getting really close to the beginning of the year. So we're going into Thanksgiving. We're going into Christmas. Perhaps this episode even set airs. These, set these mofos up for an entire year, bro. So here's the thing. Uh, we're one of the only fitness organizations you'll find that is going to tell you it's going to take a while. It's going to take long? a while. How long? 30 days while? 30 no. days? 60 days? You're going to give me the best shape? It takes at least a year. What? It's going to take a while to really get your body in the shape you want. We're not going to lie to you. However, a year really isn't that long of time, especially when you have ex- uh, expert exercise programming, and we offer some of the best that you can find. Now, we offer something called the MAPS Super Bundle. Basically, it's a bundle because it includes all of our most important MAPS programs, puts them together, and you follow them in sequence, and they're all different. Some of them are body weight only. Some of them are focused heavily on strength. Some of them are on a bit focused on aesthetics. Others are correctional. Others are focused on athletic performance. So you go through all these different programs. We keep you way ahead of the plateau. Throughout the entire year. So number one, it doesn't get boring. So every two or three months, well, first off, every two or three weeks, you're changing in a new phase. But then every two or three months, you're changing into a completely new program. Your body is changing, responding 
the entire time. You're not hitting any plateaus. All the programs come with video demos of the exercises, blueprints, explanations, basically everything you need uh, to get yourself into the best shape of your life within a year. It's all planned out. And the best part about it, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you think Sal's full of shit, buy it, see it, try it, (laughs) and then fucking return it if you don't believe it. Actually, I dare you to do that. Buy the Super Bundle. Do one of the MAPS programs for 30 days. If it doesn't blow you away, if it's not better than any of the program you've ever done, just return it. We don't ask any questions. We'll give you a full refund. Do it. Now, if you want more information, if you want to read more on the different programs, if you want to watch some videos where I explain some of this stuff, just go to our new website. It's awesome. Mindpumpmedia.com. Hey, what were you yelling about in your car today, this morning? Huh? You were yelling, like, on your way in? It was like this. I call each other. He's like... He, when he's gesturing at his phone, you know what I'm saying? He's just like gesturing at it. Listen here. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Were you doing talk- a story? I don't know what you're talking he about. He just gets passionate. It's that Italian in him. I have, you know? I have no idea what oh, you're you talking in, about. Were you Instagramming hard? Yeah, I think so. Uh, <laughs> you, that's, what <laughs> that's what I was doing. That's what it is. You know what I realized? Uh, uh, what I realized, really realized the other day? Mm. Really, really? So you know how like, yeah, exactly. You know how one when one thing is off on your body, everything up the kinetic chain gets affected. Oh, yeah. yes. But I forget it. I forget it until I experience it again firsthand. Oh, right. So you guys remember when I had my uh, my snafu in Mexico? Oh, by the way, I'm using that word a lot oh, now. we remember. It's snafu. been following you. I don't know if I'm using it right. Snafu. I think it means a fuck up or something, right? Mm. Am I wrong? Or, I don't yeah, know. Right. So when I like fell. That. Basically, I fell and a normal person would have died. Luckily, <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about me. But all I did was really twist Thank my God, ankle. you had athletic skills yeah. on your side. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's got like a hangnail, bro. I've yeah. got to put him down for like a I've, week. I've got, the agi- <laughs> I've got the agility of a, of a two-legged cat. So anyway, I, uh, I slide down the stairs, bust my ankle up, super swollen. So now I'm walking funny. Next thing you know, knee starts to bother me, hip starts to bother me. It's going all the way up, right? All the way up the chain. Sure. Now my neck. Of all things, right? Now my neck is starting to And if people are thinking like, no, dude, your ankle doesn't affect your neck. Oh, absolutely. Try yes. this. Put on a fucking neck brace, like a super stiff neck brace, and then try and walk normal. Good luck. You yeah. can't because you're like, meh, meh, meh. doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. Batman. We're like not ori- meant to be robots. Like, like the original Batman. Remember Michael Keaton when he was Batman? Mm-hmm. And he had that, that thing on, and when he turned his head, like the whole thing had to turn. Uh-huh. Yeah, Have you ever been like in one of those? I've been in one. In a Batman? You've no. been inside Batman? <laughs> yeah, it's stupid, dude. That's pretty in cool. In a neck brace, you idiot. Oh, why? Uh, when I was younger, I don't remember what I did, actually. I just remember being in the brace for like a week. You can't, I don't know. You don't what, know why you were in a brace? Yeah, probably football or basketball. Were you chicken sport, heading too much? Or probably bike riding. You <laughs> banged too hard. Uh, <laughs> no, it, and it wasn't like a major. It was. I didn't have to get casted or anything. I had a brother-in-law who crashed his motorcycle and had one of these. Oh, had the halo? Yeah, had, oh, wow. yes. Hey, yeah, he couldn't couldn't move or nothing. It was crazy. Those look really gnarly. So, oh, dude, you know, it's, you know, it's who's like had the metal most, head? Who's had the most broken bones in I've this had room? None. I probably Me neither. have. Yeah. You have? How many yeah, broke? Dude, what have you mean, broke? I mean, I broke my right arm twice in the same year. Oh, sh- how old so were you? I was, um, I think I was ten. Oh, okay. So you're fine. You weren't you weren't jerking off by then? Nah. Yeah. So it wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that big of a deal. But that's it. Just your your arm. Yeah, well, just my arm. I think, um, yeah, everything else was like <laughs> penetration wounds. Do I have to what? What? Yeah. what? Yeah. What so you, I stepped on mean? a nail. Oh, okay. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, okay. That, you guys got excited. <laughs> no, I got worried. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got worried too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, so that you're not telling us? No, 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 no. This isn't a confessional. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, I jumped off of a retaining wall and I landed right on this huge, like, rusty nail. Oh. And um, Did it go in all the way? Like, deep? So it went, it went way, way up in there. I had the worst part of it, right, was that it healed, but it healed with this like flesh eating bacteria that came up through my shoe. Oh, shit. So basically the wound healed. And then I was like, man, this is not getting better. And it fucking hurt. And I couldn't walk. And I ended up like crawling home at one point because my I couldn't even fit my shoe on because my foot blew up so much. Like it swole. Got infected? Yeah. Flesh eating bacteria, bro. Yeah. Every, that that kills people sometimes. Yeah. So my, was, or they'll, they'll have to amputate limbs and shit. To this day, my dad feels awful because like I, he, he, he was were, like tough it out, you know, because I did that oh, whole damn. Epsom salt thing, and I'm like like hobbling, you know, home from from the bus stop, and uh, then like, finally, Don't be a pussy. <laughs> yeah, then finally, so they had to, they took me to like uh, the family doctor. He just gives a little like numbing, like topical numbing stuff, and then just starts slicing it open. 
uh, because it, it just needed to be drained so bad. Ugh. And then I had to go from there to the hospital. I was in the hospital for like 10 days, just draining it. People sticking shit in Dude, there. Those, those, oh, moments, it was terrible. those are those moments that scar you for a kid with your relationship with your parents, like forever, <laughs> right? Like, oh, Have you guys, uh, yeah. okay, now being- You feel so be, bad about being it. Being honest, yeah. okay, being honest and both fathers- have you had those moments yet where you're like, fuck, is this one of those moments where I just scarred my oh, kid? Oh, I see what you're saying. Like that we did with our kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, totally. Oh, because man. where you freak out and you're like, oh shit, I did it. I'm going to fuck it's, it. It's funny you say that. Well, two things. First off, I guarantee you that was more traumatic for your dad than you. Yeah. Be- because he's, because yeah, right? if I was a dad, I would feel, you know, terrible. Oh, he slept like at, at, you know, every night. It, like he didn't have to, but he was like sl- sleeping in the chair right next to me in the hospital. You know, you know, he felt bad. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah. So it's funny you say that. So I just read a study that shows that spanking children um, actually causes them to have worse behavior. So it's a controversial study. This oh, whenever you talk about controversial. whenever you talk about raising kids or whatever, there's always lots of controversy. Now I was raised old school, old school uh-huh. Sicilian. So we were spanked. I got the, my mom used the wooden spoon. Oh, yeah, we had the they had the belt, <coughs> she, all that stuff. She'd throw her shoe if she needed to. There was four <laughs> kids. <laughs> it was it was it would get pretty gangster sometimes. But you know we were crazy kids, and you know it was, it was a tough situation. And and I'll tell you what, my I have the best parents a kid could ever ask for. I have great relationship with my parents, love them absolutely. So I don't have any bad you know memories in in, in terms of that. We weren't abused or anything like that. Now my kids. I have spanked my kids a grand total of two times, literally two times. And the reason why I know it's two, because I remember both times exactly. Very impactful. Because it was super traumatic yeah. for me. Yeah. I have like a very similar story. Cause I, so one time I remember my son was just, he was acting like a total like brat, like just going off. I don't remember what he did. He did something to his grandfather. Um, and finally I just got really angry and I do you snatched. Remember, do you remember how old he was? Um, like one. No, no, <laughs> six months. Fucking bad. No, dad. he was. Uh, I think oh, he was man. like uh, maybe three, four. So he's in that age where you know, three, four years old. By the way, t- terrible twos are nothing. Three years old. Oh yeah, that's no. when shit goes crazy. Yeah. So I snatched him up, you know, by his by by his, the back of his shirt, because like, I don't remember what he was. He was doing something to his grandfather. I snatched him up, and I spanked him on his butt. He had, you know, not hard or anything, but just swatted him, yeah. and then sat him in the in the couch, like sat him down. <laughs> And then, you know, I could see, the, and it worked. Obviously, he stopped because, you know, he was terrified. Right. And after I did that, and then I sat there, and then, of course, my dad, who now is a completely different human, you know, he's like, you don't need to do that to your kid. Like, you shouldn't. But I'm looking, I'm like, excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> like, you should hey, drag man. me down the stairs. Yeah. Yeah. Come like, on. Like, hey, well, yeah, you're just trying to get into heaven now. Uh, so I but anyway, so I, I, I spanked him. I sat him down, and then... It destroyed me for a long time, and then I, I had this this uh, dialogue with myself where, you know, here I am. I'm this huge com- in comparison to my kid, right? You got a three year old or whatever. I'm this big ass like person. Like I'm this huge. Imagine if there was a giant, the same strength difference and size difference to me. Like it would be a guy who was like I know. 15 feet tall, you know, 700 pounds, just and then if he, and if I disagreed with him, he could just. You know, smack me, and then that's it. I have to listen. Mm. So I'm like, God, I had to use violence to make my point against this small human. Yeah, that's when you know you've lost. It didn't feel. It yeah. just didn't feel. I, I don't know. If it didn't thing. feel right. You my know what oldest. I mean? We were at um, a, a birthday party for like a bunch of kids and stuff, and like it was family, and um, uh, it was. It, it came around time. You know, around time where you have to leave. You got to give morning, and I I gave morning. You know, hey man, you know we got to leave. Um, so you got like five more minutes. And so I'm, I'm doing the rounds. I come back and he's just like resistant, resistance, resistance. And I get it. Like he's having a lot of fun. And um, I'm like, no, seriously, like I have to be somewhere. Let's go. And he just wasn't listening, wasn't listening. And then like, you know, I go to grab him and then he freaks out, starts screaming at me. And this is when he was like, yeah, he was like four. And uh, so. <laughs> it's a good time at that. Yeah. Age. It was just like, <sighs> it, it's at that. It was this one impactful thing where it was like, like, you can't behave this way. Like he, this is unacceptable and I like took him like so there was like some woods there I took him in the woods and you know like smacked him on the butt and uh, you know he, just this look of horror in his eyes as he looked up at me <laughs> I was just like my soul just was like ah and I, I put him in the car and like, like left I didn't say bye to anybody I was like we're out of here and then after that it was just like it was, yeah it was really like one of those things I was like oh my god like that's you know what you guys aren't even that bad. I think of like the the shit that I went through and stuff of like that, and I think God, how many of those like situations do you, as a father do you have to make before you fuck the kid up? 
Like, oh, I see what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, how many how many times does a like a parent push that boundary? Uh, not really thinking, right? A- acting out emotionally and not being, not thinking. Well, I like, definitely like lost my cool. I think that's why. That's what it know, is. I felt bad because I, I internally, like, I was like raging. You know right. what I mean? While I did it, I, I couldn't calm down before I did it, which would have been totally different. It's, so it's really what you're demonstrating because because somebody I actually posted that study in the forum because I'm this is a fascinating discussion for me. And I don't judge people who spank their kids if, as long as they're loving parents and not abuse all that stuff. Because again, I was raised in that way, right? But it's an interesting debate, and somebody posted a very interesting comment. And what they said was that when they were kids, if they did something that that their parents deemed, uh, you know, that they deserved a spanking or whatever, mm-hmm. their dad would take them aside, would talk to them about it very calmly. That's the important thing. They said that their dad never lost her temper. Yeah, talked to them about it very calmly and said, "Now I'm going to spank. Think you. about it, and in ten minutes, I'm going to give you a spanking." Yep. And they said it was so much more powerful. It's the psychology of it. Yeah, because he didn't lose. They didn't lose. You know, you're not showing them that you're acting out emotionally. And then it's not the actual violent part of it, right? That's determining. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's really like it's like this is a consequence. You know, and it's very calm and rational about it. That's yeah, really I remember one. There's one other. What did thing the study that say? Tell me what the study the, said. The study said that that they show that spanking makes kids behave worse, how, and it, and it you, causes yeah, problems later how on. The fuck do you I study know, that? I don't know. And you know what? It makes me wonder. I don't know. It, ma- that. it makes me wonder a couple things because you think like, how many times have you heard this? Like, oh, if parents just beat their kids a little more, then we wouldn't have all these crazy kids, or you know, yeah. this kid, these kids just need a good spanking. And it makes me, it makes me shake my head because that's not why <clears throat> people act crazy. It's because they don't have parents around. Yeah. It's either they don't have a dad around the or their attention. mom's too too busy or nobody really cares about them. It's yeah. not the spanking part. They're you know? not being listened to. Yeah, no. Um yeah, yeah I, there's another thing that that I that happened. It's like a this is like a confessional, isn't it? Yeah. Um that man, I think about to this day, it was just terrible what I did. My kid was he wasn't eating his dinner and he was just being a shit about it. Mm. And so I said you have to finish all of this food before you go to before you go upstairs and, and before you can go play or oh, whatever. I know, yeah. And so he force fed himself, and then he walks away and then throws up. Oh uh, man, you got to feel like a uh, oh, huge. This is I, I feel like the biggest asshole. That's of such all time. an old guard mentality, though. You know, like God. that was just pounded into our heads. It's as, so as weird. Kids, so it makes perfect sense that that would be you know our reaction towards it's it. I've had so the same weird. thing. Yeah. But. Are there things that your parents did to you that now formed you as how you father? And like you remember, like I won't do that. You know, oh, I won't. Do your, that? Yeah, your dad did something, or your mom did something to you, and it like boom. That was a mental check for you, whether you were seven years old or fifteen years old, and you said, "When I parent, that'll be something I never do." Hmm. Do you hmm. remember moments like that? You know, because I, like I said, I think my parents did such a good job. I mm-hmm. can't think of anything that they did that I thought was terrible, but I can think of something that they didn't do that I would do. And the one thing is, again, because it's an old school, it was kind of that old fashioned, old school, you know, uh, you know, uh, growing up that way or whatever. We didn't talk about certain things. Like sex was never a topic. Mm-hmm. Drugs were never, a to- it was like, we didn't talk about these difficult subjects because they were so taboo mm-hmm. that they were never brought up. So, and it, 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 I could see how that may have created some, interesting relationships that I may ha- I had with those subjects. And of course later on as an you know as I grew up I started learning myself and okay, you know cuz I was I was I was brought up sex was taboo. You didn't talk yeah. about it. Masturbation was taboo. Like it's bad, don't do it. And oh yeah, alcohol for me was taboo. Like everything like that there was just so much restriction that it, for me it was more of a rebellious kind of pressing back and and you know and like t- you know tattoos, like all that stuff. Like that's why I have them, you know. And it's like <laughs> it's <laughs> it's so shitty cuz it's like you know I realized that about myself. Like I was just pressing back hard. Like that was the only reason why. And so I guess for me like cuz my parents did a great job of me as well. Like they were just very much like in tune with everything I was doing. And so like if I was hanging out, they would let me hang out with friends that they knew were like party, but like, he'd be like, listen, you call me, anything happens, but I'm always, you know, here, you give me a call. Like I'll come pick you up, whatever, like no questions, which was cool. And, but at the same time, you know, there was this fear established, you know, if I ever did anything, I was going to get kicked out of the house. (laughs) That was always the thing that was always driving it. It was like, you're going to get kicked out of the house. It was like, kick me out of the house then you know like it was like this pushback and uh so i don't know i'm trying to figure that out how to kind of more have a conversation about stuff like that mm-hmm. so it's how, how about you adam really 
No, I don't. <laughs> We're, today's I mean, this a little, today's different. yeah, today's yeah, Q and A, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you don't have time for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Next time you can ask me, just give me well, a year. Are, bro. are there are there things in particular, like if you had kids that you're like, oh, for man, sure, I'm going to do this. Absolutely, for bro. Sure. There's, t- there's tons of stuff, man. I mean, to this morning, I was talking to a buddy of mine and and uh, just kind of commending him on what an incredible job that he did raising his daughter. He's got a daughter now who's. Uh, 16 and she's like her academics are crazy she's an you know four sport athlete like you know and he's a single father that raised her you know what i'm saying and he, he did such a great job with her and he, we were talking about he he's he said early on he he shared with her like so and, and this is kind of cool because we were talking about you and your son and what you you know seeing how how proud you are what, what he's done and uh he he shared with his his daughter early on like the finances and putting her mm. through private school and the reason why he did it, he said, was, you know, he, he saw all these these kids that he was going, she was going to school with, and they were just kind of these spoiled little brats. And he wanted to make very clear to his daughter, and he did he did it in a way where it wasn't like make her feel guilty. Dad's giving all his money mm. so you could go to school. Just it was giving, making her aware. Yeah, making her aware, like you know, this this is how hard we work, and this is you know the fun, the little funds we have, and this is how much um, we're investing in, in you and stuff like that. So it's important that what we do with it. So. You know, things like that. Like my parents didn't share any any finance stuff, you know, like they didn't I didn't know I mean what I saw was us failing and not not being able to to stay in a house long enough and you know the food stamps and electricity and bullshit like that. So you know, and, and ironically, I'm the, the the numbers guy and, and into finances and I love that stuff, which um, that's a lot of that I'm sure stems from that, right? It stems because I didn't. I wasn't let in on, in on that early on as a child. I was just here. Give me your money. You know, if I got money or extra money, or once I started working when I was fifteen, you know, a lot of my money went back to my parents to help pay the bills and do shit like that. So, yeah, that's something that I would do different. But uh, man, there's a lot of most of my memories, unfortunately, and it's and I didn't like again. I didn't. I we did things as a kid. I wasn't. It wasn't that bad. But it, what's what's crazy and why I like to ask questions like this and talk about this stuff is. I don't, I don't remember the good stuff. There's, I have all these like really bad scars from childhood that I remember because though as a kid, those are what stick with you. Mm. You know, the time that my parents probably sat me down and told me how much they love me and, and spent time with me or took me to Disneyland. So that that's a blur, but I could vividly remember like my mom dragging me by my hair, throwing me in a shower and whooping the shit out of me. You know what I'm saying? I can remember that. I can remember mm. my parents watching me get handcuffed. Although it was a three, five GPA, never had sex, didn't do drugs. Good kid watching me get handcuffed and walk out the side out out the house because they called the cops on me and shit like you know I remember stuff like that that has forever changed me and molded me into who I am which is what I'm great I'm grateful for those memories but I always wonder like what's the what what's the limit like did, was it that I had you know eight or nine of those situations that happened that were unbelievably impactful that like scarred me mm-hmm. and it was just the right amount that turned me to do the right and be good and what if I had ten or fifteen you know or what if there mm-hmm. was yeah, or what if there were none of them right or yeah or what if there was none of them what what, what would I have been like you know would I have been a little spoiled brat because I got none I got all this love isn't or, it interesting how yeah. our, our our your situations can either it can either forge you uh, or you know into this incredible you know successful determined human being or it can break, break you yeah. and it's almost like it's almost like a combination like you have to have the right combination and how do you know you know what that is and i don't know man it's crazy because i feel like some people will succeed no matter what mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. i think like you're one of those people i think yeah you hear certain situations and stories like you you you, you know you you hear about like oprah somebody we've talked about many times the most successful people of all time she came up through incredible under uh, incredibly difficult circumstances from a ch- as a child all the way up until you know na- you know she succeeded, and would she, you know is she the kind of person that would have succeeded no matter what, mm-hmm. or was it because of her? So it's it's so tough to, to speculate. Well, I, I do know that when when you're that age, at least, and I shared when we were all and just just got back from Hollywood, we were in there, we stayed up and I, and uh, we're out in the jacuzzi, and I was sharing like a story with you guys that I hadn't shared, and um, you know those those memories definitely or those things those situations definitely forged me who I am today and it makes other things it, it changes your perspective right because when you're a young kid and you're coming up and you go through shit like that like you do feel alone and you do feel sure. scared and it's and it's like for you it's the end of the world right at 7 years old that those moments that that you went through did feel but then i made it through and so then it makes me go in the things that other people which is why too i had to deal with a lot of um I didn't have a lot of empathy for people as I got older. 
So what one thing that I was, which is still a part of my. It was app. probably hard for you to even understand why they would trip out. Over, right, right, over yeah, things. Right, yeah, people. Like you have it too easy. Yeah. Yeah, like people would would vent to me, and I'm definitely not one like that shares a lot of these stories. If you ask me, I'm an open book. Like if someone digs into me and says like, "Tell me about this, Adam," and ask deeper, like I'll share my story and stuff like that, especially if it, it, it can benefit somebody. But I'm most certainly not somebody to say, "Poor me, this was like this." So, you know, I think that. When you do go through things like that, it does change your perspective on the other shit, which is, I think, in turn, you know, helped me out as an adult later on. But it always makes you wonder that, you know, was it just one one more situation or two more situations that could have turned me for the you over. yeah that could have and then I just said fuck it right give yeah. up like this is life scary you, dude right yeah. yeah and you wonder that so I was just curious about you guys mm. like I mean that's it's crazy to me to hear you say those two, <laughs> you guys give this example of like you you and whack your so- <laughs> you whack your kids on the butt one time because you yeah. lost your temper and yeah. I'm like fuck dude they're gonna be okay dude well, yeah <laughs> yeah mm. but that's the shit we worry about all the time we don't want to tip them over the edge you know what I mean yeah it's and not even so much I just feel bad you just feel bad yeah. I'll tell you what was some things that were real impactful for me was learning how my dad grew up and learning how my grandfather grew up because they were poor. They were very, very poor. My dad grew up with uh, you know lots of siblings. Him and his brothers shared one bed until he moved out, until he was uh, 18 years old and, and got married. He shared a bed with you know his three brothers in one, not even a like king size bed, and they slept you know head to feet, you know, so like kind of staggered oh, or whatever. Wow. Yeah, he's till he till the day he moved out. Um, they did that. My grandparents didn't have, I mean, my, my dad didn't have a phone. They didn't have a phone in the house, even when he moved out. In fact, my grandparents got a phone, I think, by the time my sister was born, then they finally got a phone. So they would go somewhere else to make phone calls and stuff. <laughs> That's crazy. So very crazy. I mean, nine years old, he was working, not just like like going with his dad to fuck around. Like He had a job. Like He had to go yeah. and do this work, and they'd pay him like a, nothing because he's a kid, and he'd come home and give it to his mom or whatever. And he tells a story of how when he was, I think he was like 13 and his mom would let him, you know, she would take the money that he earned and then she'd give him a little bit for himself and he could use it to, you know, to, if you wanted to go watch a movie or something like that. And he saved up. I, th- I don't remember what he told me. It was a long time, like two years. He saved up all these coins or whatever. And he went and he bought a used bike. So he buys this bike and he puts it together and, and fixes it or whatever because it was all fucked up. And he was like the most proudest moment of his life, right? So oh, wow. he's got this bike. He's riding it around. He's so proud of himself. It's like his only thing he ever owned. And he, he, he showed up late for work. And his dad, he worked with, you know, at the same place with his dad, showed up late for work uh, because he was playing on his bike. So my grandfather ran over his bike with with their oh with their, dude that, had, was, oh, that hurts me yeah that was like, oh, yeah it's like three, they have the, yeah these three wheel trucks that they use to sell fruit on or whatever and he like oh, ran no. it over and my dad's like he always remembers just crushed that. him yeah. yeah he always remember oh. that so my dad got super mad and yelled at his dad for it yeah. and then which you don't do uh, and so he had to sleep outside so he wasn't <laughs> allowed outside. in the house and he's and I'm like and when I was a kid I hear the story and I'm like yeah whatever then I got older and I asked him I'm like did you really like sleep outdoors like outside your house as a kid and he goes oh yeah and he goes my mom snuck me food because my, my dad told her don't even feed me like just leave him out there for a couple of days so he learns less so she snuck him so i hear all these stories and i'm like wow, holy shit man Damn. crazy right yeah crazy 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 stories we're all soft yeah is, is the end of the day <laughs> bring on the soft bear doug Oh wait a minute! Aren't we? Aren't uh, we are, us. Didn't you get us some more gifts? Yeah, we was, got some more goodies from Thrive Market. Yeah, oh, you know this is my new favorite uh, thing that we dude, do. Can I just tell you something? This is the best idea I think we've ever had because we get shh, Doug gets to buy us stuff. I know every oh, time, yeah. it's and it's exciting, and, stuff it, and it doubles as a commercial for Thrive Market. Yeah, what did you get us, Doug? Oh yeah. We always need more macadamia. Oh, good. The, uh, <laughs> That's yeah, becoming a staple. Yeah. Wait, what is the other one? Is that macadamia in us too? Oh, no, no, no. This is for Justin. Yeah. Oh, uh, no. It has, it has his name on it. <laughs> you oh, got him the peanut butter cups? Uh, oh, dude. yeah. They're Justin's peanut butter cups. This is my favorite. I thought you were on a diet. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I, thank you, They Doug. put your name yeah. on it. <laughs> you know, I have no idea what this if it is. If it has my name on it, it means I can eat it. What is this? Yeah, thing? open that thing up. There's another one here. Listen. Uh, I don't want to throw it. There's glass Listen, in here. Listen, they're organic, so oh. therefore that means healthy. You know, they 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 wrap everything in this biodegradable uh, paper. It Ooh, looks dark. Like. Is it really biodegradable? Yeah, it's, it's recycled paper. It's re- recycled paper. They try to be uh, 
very conscious. What is this? Yeah. Garden in a can? Grow organic cilantro right out of this can? Yeah, that's pretty oh, cool. Oh, that's great. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's rad. That's interesting. Oh, Himalayan pink salt from Thrive Market. Yeah, that's oh. for the studio. Oh, and it's got a grinder on it. Uh, no that, wonder. I know why you're giving it That's good because we were always going to Luna. Like, I need some more salt. And because I yeah, put salt on for everything. For sure, you're the salt guy. Oh, this I is salt hilarious bacon. right here. And we've got some communal lotion for oh. everybody here. This is the stuff I buy at Whole Foods. A couple dollars less on Thr- Thrive Market. Don't let me catch you masturbating right. with my lotion. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll weird me out. If now, I this rub- is for yeah. Adam, but he may share these with everybody else. Oh. What did you get? What do I got here? Oh, they have flushable wipes with Thrive? Oh, Hold man, on, let I me like see it. these. Oh my God, they have yes. everything. Hold on, flushable wipes. What's what's uh? It's just it's like butt wipes, bro. It's yeah, me. I know, but hold on. There's got to be something natural about these. That, oh yeah, look at that. The the ingredients are all are all natural, and they plant one tree for every box sold. Very nice. What's oh, the brand really? Do they really? See, yeah. Stall- where did you forward mates. thinking companies. Doug, way to take care. Way to take care of my asshole, Doug. Yeah, uh, you're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking when, about it. When it's Doug, like a throwback. When to Doug the, said uh, he was sparkly gonna, taints. When Doug said he was going to take care of the asshole, I don't think that's what he meant. Oh, oh <laughs> I, I, I thought this is what he was talking about. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Okay, our next thing here is for Sal. Oh, what is that? Try them oh, out. Of course, thrive, this makes perfect sense. Thrive brand. That makes perfect sense. Oh, sardines. Yeah. Fuck yeah. And olive oil. You know what's funny about this? When they oh never mind, I thought it said gluten free. I love it when they put gluten free on like obvious on, like, shit. Fish. Yeah, gluten free yeah. water. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got one each for ourselves of these, which is a bone thing broth. Of bro- bone broth. Try it out. Let me Thrive know. Thrive brand like it. bone broth. Yep. Awesome. How awesome. much stuff did you buy, Doug? Oh, it's I a- went crazy. Yeah. He did go yeah. a little overboard. Here. He's such a good dad. <laughs> yeah. It looks like. And juice, this is for the studio. I don't know what how they are. I just thought I'd try them out. They're coconut chips. Oh, oh very good. good. From Thrive Market. Excellent. Awesome. Excellent. And that's it for this week. Right on. Thank you, Doug. That's Hello. a little shout out to Thrive Market. Right, right. Good stuff. Go. Now we can bring on the fatherly bird. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. Our first question is from Shannon Bougie. Why do you think women are typically more susceptible to body distortion and eating disorders and or food relationship issues than men are? Oh, that's mm. easy. Shout out to Shannon, good friend of mine. That's all the that's all the fucking marketing, man. Yeah, there It's cuz that's been women have been marketed to like that for a very long time and it's just it's become the norm. Now you have to so let's dive deeper into this because as we all know, the market the market it, it drives behaviors but behaviors also Drive the market. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So there's also there's two sides it's, to it's, this. It, I mean, women are the women buy more. They're they're res, they're responding to they're that the type. Of, yeah, they're responding to that type of marketing. It's working, so they're going to continue to do that. And it's just like feeding the beast. It is. And the other thing I'm thinking about too is, I I think part of it if there's some roots here, right? Uh, men tend to be more visually stimulated mm-hmm. uh, than women. We're more visual than women are. And so I think that women, knowing this, place more emphasis on how they look presentation. and all, presentation. Mm-hmm. And so it kind of feeds this. It's a cycle, right? It's the cycle that kind of feeds itself. Marketers know this, or you know, whether they know this consciously or unconsciously in the beginning. And so when they start to market and they market to insecurities, they market to don't be fat or you're too skinny or whatever. Women respond very strongly to it. And it just does this kind of, you know, this this cycle type of thing to the point now where marketing uh, is such a big part of our lives. I mean, it's such a mat. Think about it this way: there isn't anything that you consume today where marketing isn't injected in some way. And and you know, it's a good and bad thing. Part of it is bad because you know we're again we're getting all these messages, but part of it is also it's it, it's what funds our ability to cons- to get information like. If YouTube didn't have advertising, if TV didn't have advertising, if nothing had advertising, then then the only other way to, for them to even provide what we want is, I guess, to have membership services. Like you'd have to pay a fee or whatever. Mm. So, but uh, but definitely they're more susceptible, p- partly because that's just what you're brought up in as a kid. I mean, think about it being a young girl, 
And I watch this, by the way, with my kids. I have, I have obviously two kids, a boy and a girl. And I see how the girls pay attention to how they look and how each other look mm-hmm. way before the boys even notice. Yeah, they, the boys don't even notice anything necessarily about the girls. It is in interesting that can, in that sense. Very, very harsh, you know, towards one another. You know, as far as like looks are concerned, too. Like girls more so than guys. I, I sometimes I feel it's, they're very hard. Guys are harsh in other things, but when yeah. it comes to appearance, uh, women can be uh, very, very harsh with you uh, with each other. But it's it's one of those things. It's like. You know, I don't. I don't know if we're necessarily. I don't want to blame anybody or or anything. I think just talking about it's an important thing. Well, I also think that I I don't think there is much as a discrepancy as everybody thinks too. I think I think we just uh, show it differently, right? Like I think I think men have just as much uh, or have just as many insecurities, right? They're just different. Yeah, they're just they're, it's they're different ones, right? And then I think that. And same thing with the body distortion. Like guys, still trust me. Guys uh, look at every part of their body from, from I'm mean, head to toe. I mean, how many how many young men go through that uh, that phase where uh, they're really shy about being naked around other guys, and you know, and then how how many dick jokes are out there, and you don't know if you're normal or average or above average, or you know, what I'm saying there's a mm-hmm. lot of other things that guys deal with that's a little bit different, but it's kind of in the same category. We just don't talk about it as much, and we handle it differently, mm-hmm. right? We tease, we punch each other, yeah. and we tease each other. Hey, little dick, come on over, bury here. that down real deep, right? You yeah. know, <laughs> so. <laughs> It is, yeah, but I I think it's no emotion. I, I I think it's more. I think it's more equal than people think, dude. I think it's it's definitely bad on both sides. But when you're like, if you look at if you look at mental disorders, men uh, lead. We lead the charge. We have more mental disorders than women do. However, if you look at certain categories, you can clearly see. Yeah, but that or, couldn't, or, couldn't couldn't that number alone be skewed just from war? Uh, from being in war. Yeah. Or um. Perhaps, but they've done studies on uh, you know periods of time when there wasn't war, and men we just tend to suffer for them. This is this is just actually this is not even a, a debate. Scientists are pretty um, they're pretty unanimous on this. Just men tend to suffer from mental disorders more often. However, in particular categories of that, you do see dominance of women, and one of which is eating disorders. Eating disorders are far high. That's a it's a much much higher. Uh, you know, uh, percentage of women who have eating disorders versus men. Now, of course, there's another, there's something we're not necessarily factoring in there, and that is that women are far more likely to talk about when they have an issue, whereas mm. men are taught to not talk about certain things. So if a woman feels something or is having a problem, she's more likely to call out for help, whereas a guy tends to not. And you can see this with suicide, uh, the suicide rate is much higher in men, but the suicide attempt rate uh, uh, is relatively similar. So women attempt suicide at high rates as well, but they just don't they don't uh, follow through or they don't actually do it m- because it could be viewed as you know calling out for help. Whereas a guy is not going to call for help, and then finally when he does it, he actually he's going to do it. He actually does it. So, um, but yeah, it's. It sucks because I have a daughter and I know what kind of world um, she's, you know, she's being, you know, raised in. I know what she's, especially with social media and what she's going to see. I know her dad is in the fitness industry and I'm surrounded by all this and I, and I'm representing fitness and health and all that stuff. And she's going to one day look at my Instagram with my flexing pictures and all that other stuff. And is that going to, that could go both two directions. It can make it harder on her. You know, because I could only imagine if my, you know, I know how I felt growing up being skinny and my dad being this kind of athletic, strong guy. Like, what if he was a bodybuilder? What if he was in that world? Right. Would that make me feel, you know, worse or would it, you know, help? I don't know. It's a, it's a tough thing. But I tell you what, um, we have the power to change this right away. Like, right, right. if women just decided, like, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna wear high heels anymore. We're like high, if you really th- if you really think about it, and this is gonna get this is gonna piss some people off, but I'm just speaking objectively. If you really think about some of the stuff that we do uh, to to you know make ourselves appear some to way, peacock, it's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. like think on, about on it, both sides though. That's not just women. It's yeah. true. It's women. It's true. Men but are fucking just as bad, if not worse. We, well, with, I, I think it's both sides, but some of the stuff that women do is downright dangerously. I mean, high, like high, let's talk about high heels. You are literally creating horrible imbalances throughout the entire body 
for what? It's really crazy when Makes you think calves, about it. Makes hamstrings, and butt look great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it does. It's really, really crazy when you think about it. Now, guys, of course, we do stupid shit like when we try and show off. Um, and buy the you know the lifted truck or the faster car. Whoa, dude, you, back off the yeah. lifted truck, motherfucker. <laughs> Man. Easy, dude. Hold on a second. How many guys have lifted trucks that never do shit with them? Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm just I'm just being objective here. Of course, everybody, you know, you you have a right to do know, whatever you want to look a particular way. But it's um it's it's pretty crazy stuff. But yeah, women are far more susceptible. Do and you, in fitness, women dominate as consumers. Do you think we're getting worse or better? I think there's more awareness around it, but maybe the awareness is higher because it's worse. Wasn't there you know what like I'm saying? A, a big push for like the real, uh, you know, real look as far as like not there is. Like overly so, there makeup is, and everything? Be, because we're all so connected, there is this, you know, and we saw that when we just talked about this just recently about the, um, whatchamacallit, where you, you're okay with, you love your body, you love yourself, even when you're right. 100 pounds like overweight. That's a part of it, yeah. that, That's a part of it, of heading the heading back, because we went the other direction so far, right, of glorifying these anorexic models on the cover right. of magazines, and now it's like, no, this really? is not nah. right. Yeah. So then we went to the other extreme, so hopefully we'll find someone to balance, but I definitely think uh, we are worse right now. But It, it feels I, like it, right? Yeah, I mean, and that's, to me, in my opinion, like, I think, inst- especially after, and I can't wait for you guys to listen to uh, the episode um, that we did with Christina mm. from. Uh, oh yeah, uh, actually, oh, we actually, talked about yeah, this. Yeah. yeah, like she, her, her listening to her being twenty two years old and her insight, and then her sharing about this. You know, was it seven year old girl that she said that had, that mm-hmm. she talked to? You know, and what they're going through with like Instagram and all that. Like, wow, it blew my mind. Like, I was aware of it. We talk about it's it on this show. Crazy impacts that we didn't even realize. Yeah, that you know what? That it's like it's forming them right now. And you, we don't know. We need 10, 20 more years before we see what's what's that going to turn them into adults, right? Like, what's yeah. going to happen to them when they get into adults? And uh, are they going to be rebound, be able to rebound from it, uh, go, growing up through this? you know, Instagram era right now. It's, it is like Sal says, it is like narcissist heaven, you know, like it's definitely uh, changing a kid's perspective on what's cool, what's not. Am I good looking? Am I getting enough likes or attention? And like, it's taking, it's taking that to a whole new level. And, the, and the, you know, it's, and it's always been there, right? But it, it's yeah. different now. And what pisses me off is we'll, we'll take something that's good. And then next thing you know, it turns into something that's bad again. Like, right, like right. for example, the strength movement that we are seeing with that we've seen with women like we've been in i've been in fitness for 20 years right i've seen how the industry's marketed to women for two decades uh i've been in it professionally i see how women respond to you know workouts and stuff like that and relatively recently only recently has it been kind of cool for a woman to be strong and lift weights for a long time it wasn't even like being strong wasn't even a good thing yeah like they didn't want to get strong because that was masculine all of a sudden now women are like, yeah, I want to, you know, build some muscle and I want to get stronger. I've never heard women say that before. I didn't hear that for the first at least 15 years I was in the industry. But now we're turning that into butt implants. We're turning it into, you know, uh, I have to have a six pack. We're turning it into extreme. And it's like, fuck, man, like we can't uh, look, w- like what's going on. Why can't we just take something good and leave it there? Yeah. <laughs> Why does it have to go in that fucking direction? It's. It's kind of infuriating. I tell you what, like well, I said, we're, we're we're rewarding people for that. Yeah. Totally, we're, you know, when like you, stop following these pages and stuff. Like, right. it, like, like it, people will change the 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 market will change its behavior if you show them that you're not paying for it anymore. And I think I think people are becoming more savvy again because this was early on, right? So the the big rush of Instagram when it for this over the last what three years or so, the explosion of it. It's it's now we're kind of seeing like the you know the cream rise to the top as far as what what people should be aspiring to be like versus the facade that was put out there. Mm-hmm. People are getting called out now, right? So you're starting to see that uh, that transparency is king right now, and that the more people that are being real and being straightforward are starting to get a little love. It's still not at that point where it gets everybody because I still see this really young generation still gravitating towards. You know the the flashy cars, the you know half naked pictures, and the look at the look at me type of deal mm-hmm. uh, use of Instagram. But I feel like it, it'll it'll change. I, I I just worry more about the 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 age group that is going through this during their formative years, right? Like it, mm-hmm. you know, if you got three four years of of this, it could really form and shape your perspective. Yeah, and now that I think about it, when we were kids, there really wasn't a 
like a positive uh, there weren't too many popular positive voices for women in this regard right I don't rem- I can't remember too many today I can think of several for example podcasts which didn't exist back then but I can think of several podcasts that are hosted by women or that are in the fitness space like ours like we try and put out that positive message yeah where that's the underlying theme. So I guess the information's out there now and it's more accessible. Like I, I think, I, do you guys, can you guys remember any, I remember like Oprah, she would do some of these episodes on it, you know, but it really wasn't a big message back then. It wasn't popular at least. And today I can think of several like podcasts uh, alone. Like we have Julie Bauer coming in from uh, Paleo OMG and she's, she pushes out that message. She's got a relatively well, popular I'm sure there's been a, been a lot of strong women that have been saying this message for a long time. It's just, we're more aware of it now because the ability to connect to somebody instant, instantly, right? Mm-hmm. Like with yeah. Facebook and Instagram and the, and the podcasting and, and YouTube, like, you know, that didn't exist 15 years ago. So I, I, I think as a society, I think there's still people that were emotionally intelligent, aware people that saw this, knew that we're trying to get this message out. We're not the first ones to think that, you know, this the skinny mod- model look and the anorexia thing. Marketing is not a good thing or a healthy thing mm-hmm. for women. People have been saying that for a long time. It's just now it, the voice, the, people's voices, stuff happens faster. You yeah. say this all the time. It's yeah. so true. Like the power of the internet, the power of social media now, you know, people can get away with shit, but you can't get away with shit for very long. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you, bullshit will eventually be found out and it gets found out at a much faster rate now. I mean, example, like the rise the rise and fall of like that company shreds i mean it was only three years ago when we first talked about them and now they're they're, on top of the world yeah and now they're non-existent man Mm -hmm. it's crazy you know what it makes me think of uh is like i I have a good example i when i did uh i had a short stint in yoga years ago and i remember going to a few yoga studios but there was one in particular it was a bigger one and the people that went there were super clicky they all had on the like the expensive yoga clothes. They all looked at me kind of weird. There was another woman that was new in the class, and they it was kind of like that. You know, they made her feel, and it was like in yoga. Really, the the essence of yoga is supposed to be, you know, you come in, you, it's your own practice, welcoming, yeah. welcoming. And I remember feeling like this place is disgusting, and it was just it was created. It was like you can turn anything into this negative, you know, shit, and you can turn anything into a positive, like. You know, being lean and fit and all that stuff can be very positive. It can be a very, very positive thing. It doesn't have to turn into this negative self, self-image self type of thing. Yeah. But the irony of this is, the crazy irony of all of this is, if when you do truly care about yourself, um, and when you really do have a good self-image, or at least you love you know, yourself enough to take care of yourself, the ultimate side effect of that is then you start to look healthy, which then, of course, looks fit and lean and all those other things. So the irony is not only are we, we're, we're killing ourselves emotionally, but we're also physically, we're also doing the opposite of what we should be doing, even if that's our only goal. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a strange situation. I don't know. I, I hope one of, you know, one of my personal dreams for the fitness industry is that it starts to become, among other things, a voice for this where people, girls and boys and you know, you know, men and women turn to the fitness industry when they're feeling shitty about themselves and the fitness industry makes them feel good. Not just helps them learning how to exercise and eat right and all that stuff, but they go to it and they don't end up feeling worse. They end up actually feeling good. And I hope, I hope that's what we can do uh, with our show and I hope that's what the fitness industry ends up turning into. Next question is from Grace Mallon. If you are eating in a surplus or a deficit and are going through MAPS Anabolic, technically you are not setting yourself up to gain muscle or lose weight. So then what are you doing? Just doing a little muscle building? This is a good question because I think people think that you have to be in a surplus to gain muscle or you have to be in uh, a deficit uh, to To shred body fat. To lose body fat. Now, are those both of those things important components and do they contribute? Definitely. Can you change the stimulus so that what you are already eating is repartitioned and, and, and you know more geared towards muscle and away from fat? Yes. In fact, I love using this example all the time because I've had this debate so many times online on fitness forums where I get on there and there'd be some bodybuilder dude and 
he'd be like, no, you got to eat tons of calories. You won't build muscle, this and that. And then I'll always use this argument. I'll say, okay, if you took somebody, didn't change their workout, didn't change their diet at all, just gave them anabolic steroids, steroids. would we see them have at least a little bit of muscle gain and maybe a little bit of fat loss? And of course, always quiet. Um, And because they know that the likelihood is that that would probably happen just because we're changing the signal. So I've seen this with myself where if I change my programming, so it's really, really good exercise programming and my mm-hmm. diet doesn't change, I all of a sudden get stronger, yeah, build muscle responds. and get leaner. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just, just, you, you know, just one of those change things. the stimulus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's your, de- your body will definitely respond to new uh, stimulus, a new environment, things that, um, you know, you're presenting, uh, like Sal said, as far as like the signal is concerned, that's what's uh, telling the body like, hey, we need to overcome these forces. So therefore we need to build. However, it's a temporary signal, right? It, 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 it gets weak over a certain period of time where now we have to look at, um, you know, changing it up again. But um, definitely calories are going to m- contribute towards that. Oh, it's, it's part of the equation. Yeah. I, another good example is they do studies on myostatin inhibition. So myostatin uh, in the body is like a governor for muscle growth. It's actually the most powerful, one of the most powerful things that we've uh, identified in mammals that tells uh, the body, the animal, whether it's human or you know whatever, to how much muscle it can have and how much muscle it, it won't have. And when they genetically modify these, because they've tested, they, they're trying to come up with drugs that actually do this, but when they genetically modify animals, where the they're, they have much, much lower levels of myostatin. They call them myostatin-inhibited animals. They don't feed them anymore. They don't even give them any more activity. It's like the same activity, the same food, and they're fucking... They just look freakish. Massively yeah. muscular. Yeah. I mean, that's another example of a signal that can change what your body does with what it consumes that it doesn't have to... You know, you don't have to change necessarily your food, but I do want to be clear... Eating a surplus or deficit, very important also. Yeah, if you don't do that, component. yeah, your results aren't going to Well, I think it. the question comes because we don't put as much emphasis on the the, bulk. the math of it. Right. And yeah. so, and I think that's because I think it's been uh, abused. Mm-hmm. I think there's, a, especially in the bodybuilding world, there's a total misconception of uh, if what it takes to build five pounds or 10 pounds of muscle. Uh, they, it couldn't, the way these guys are doing these bulks where they are, you know, they're just in this uh, pushing calories every day. I'm trying to get more calories. And I was this kid too. I, this is totally how I used to try and gain muscle. This is the, I was under the same impression, like all the bodybuilding.com forums. This is what, you know, everybody it's winter time. It's bulk time. You're on the bulk for three, four months at a time where you're just eating everything in sight. And yeah, absolutely, you can build some muscle there, but you're also going to put a lot of body fat on it. Mm-hmm. And w- what I didn't realize, and back then as a kid, I was so afraid to have a day of un- not hitting my targets, right? To be short 500 or 1,000 calories. Because in my head, I thought, oh, fuck, I'm in the bulk. No way could I be 1,000 calories less than what my body needs or else my body's going to eat muscle or I'm definitely not going to build. And that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, if I would have known what I know now, I would have consistently put fasting days in my bulks uh, to actually get my body to dr- drop down, resynthesize everything, right? Get it primed and ready to build again versus oversaturating everything all the time. Because, I, and I use the analogy like a sponge, you know, and think of like th- these are all your receptors, all that your body is ready to soak up when it's completely squeezed out and dry, like after a, fa- a fasting, and then you feed it all these nutrients, the body just takes it, absorbs it all really well. And then think about if you're just pouring gallons of water over that sponge, like, yeah, the sponge is going to hold, get some of the water. Absolutely. But a lot of it's going to run right mm-hmm. through. Think of it like that with our body. Like if you're constantly oversaturating the body with surplus, 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 sure. You're getting, you're getting, we're trying to, which people are trying to get the insulin, right? That's what everyone's trying. Everyone's trying to spike blood sugar, spike insulin. Insulin's supposed to yeah. help me build muscle. And that's the theory behind that. But then you just get resistant from it. You do. It, the irony is they do, they they've done studies and show in bulking within days people start to develop really low levels, but noticeable where they can test it mm-hmm. of insulin resistance. Right. Yeah. So you start to lose that effect. The funny thing is, if you make this argument uh, that if, you know during a bulk it's a good idea to throw in some fast or some low calorie days, 
you'll hear a bunch of argument. Like people will fight back. Oh, no, you just got to bulk, man. Just keep eating whatever. <laughs> but if you flip it and you tell a bodybuilder, hey, it's a good day when you're dieting. It's right. A good, to, it's a good to idea. Cheat to, day. Yeah, to throw in some extra calories. Everybody's going to agree and be like, well, no, every time I do that, I end up getting leaner. Right. Same fucking thing. It is the same thing. It's theory. the same thing. It is, it, is, it is actually the same thing. And it's, that's what a great point you just made right there because cheat meals and cheat days are so fucking popular right now it makes total sense carb cycling like bodybuilders have known for a long time right the inverse they've known for a long time if you spike calories in in the middle of a cut that you get better results but if you tell them if you drop calories in the middle of a bulk that it's good they'll argue with you and debate all day long it's the same it's the same thing that's happening uh, in the body. So. Adaptation is, you know, we talk about this all the time, whether it be your skin, whether it be the, your weight training program, whether it be nutrition, the body is, it's pretty similar all the way around, man. Is You can do stuff for a while to it. And then after a while it gets efficient. And then those, those responses that all the studies talk about, cause that's the part that pisses me off is we <laughs> take, true. we take the studies and we tell people like, Oh, when you eat in a caloric surplus, you get a spike yeah. of this and a spike of that. And that produces yeah. this. And it's so everyone's like, okay, so what do we do? We do it all the time, but it's like, okay, well, the study doesn't tell you what happens when you do that for three, four, five, six weeks consistently. Well, when you do that, then it starts, the returns start to diminish. Dude, well, we to- only know about those studies in particular because those are the ones getting paid for because of, you know, the right. marketing efforts right. of these uh, supplement companies. Exactly. The funny thing, too, is, uh, I mean, I used to bulk for months. Oh, yeah. And I, when I mean by months, is what I mean is I was always on the bulk. So it was never, I was never trying to cut, but. I would go for months where I would push the bulk really, yes, really hard. Yes, and I remember, man. I mean, like, I mean, it's so funny how unaware you can make yourself just because you're so focused on something. Mm-hmm. I'd get all these great strength gains and stuff, like the first like three or four weeks, and then I just keep pushing it. And then at that point, all I would care about was the scale. I stopped paying attention to my strength. I stopped. Paying, it was just the scale. Oh, cool! I'm getting three pounds. Oh, 100 percent. And it's like I didn't even care. If I it never. Was even care, I never cared yeah. about my strength. All I cared about was that scale weight going <laughs> yeah. up. So backwards. Isn't thinking. that hilarious? Yeah. But you know, I, I tell you what. Um, when it comes to look, look, think of it this way: a pound of human muscle, if you were to analyze it, contains I don't know. I'm going to be very general, but around 150 grams of protein. So if you think of it that way, and let's say you want to gain... Is that true? Hold on that much? Yeah, about... about So a pound of chicken would be about 140. So I'm assuming it's around... Between 120 to 150. So let's just say it's 150. Let's go on the high end. If, you're, if, you, if it's a one-to-one conversion of protein to muscle, and, you're, and you, you, you want to gain a pound of muscle a week, which, by the way, good luck. Like gaining a pound of muscle every week... You are the most genetically gifted individual on the face of the earth. But let's just say you can do that. Let's just for, for argument's sake, that you can gain a hundred you can gain a one pounds of muscle of lean body mass on your body every single week. Divide 150 grams of protein by seven days. That's an additional 20 grams of protein a day. It ain't the it ain't the what is that? 80 calories? That's not the freaking, oh yeah, dude, I just bumped my calorie my, my protein up by 80 grams and I'm eating an extra whatever carbs <laughs> and you know, I'm eating another thousand calories a day. Like, right, right. You know what I'm saying? And that's if you gained a pound of lean body mass. It's a the day, same a, a misconception week. with pregnant women and, and and how much more they need to eat. They've been eating for two for so many years. It's like, you know how much ca- you know how many extra calories you actually need? About 140. <laughs> but 140 is all you need. Like yeah. a Greek yogurt, dude. That's all you need. I'm extra. eating for two. Right. That's why I gained hundred pounds. <laughs> yeah. Nick Ford Health. What opportunities do you see in the fitness plan market now that Bodybuilding.com has made their previously free workout plans a monthly subscription service? I haven't heard many customers approve of that decision. Uh, oh, this, this is Bodybuilding.com. Oh, bodybuilding. They're scrambling. Ooh. They're scrambling, dude. Scrambling to try and make some money and turn turn. I mean, obviously, uh, the the model in the uh, back in the days was advertising, right? Was selling it, supplements. Yeah, when dot coms first started to explode. No, I mean just in general. Like how do how oh, did, I see what back you're when dot com exploded? It was build a, tr- a, a website that was trafficked so much that you could charge for advertising. And bodybuilding.com is an example. This is how they made most of their money at the beginning yeah, was. Yeah, you should get a million something like impressions a day. Right. And now I can charge for all these banners and all this, this click shit all over it and that's where they make a majority of their money. Well, that day is dying. Like it's, no longer do you see these websites littered with all kinds of advertising and advertise, adver, advertisers are going other places like podcasting and other mediums that are far more beneficial than sitting on the sidebar of a website. And so, and there's more good information that's being passed around than bodybuilding.com. Bodybuilding.com used to be the place. The old guard. In, in fact, I feel like Mind Pump is like uh, 
you know, Mercola.com had sex with bodybuilding.com. <laughs> <laughs> Right, uh, so wow. two, two of the most trafficked. That is controversial. Two of the most two of the most trafficked websites, right? <laughs> Bodybuilding.com, Dr. Mercola, you know, is another one that's up there. And a lot of the message that we give is kind of a blend of the two of them, right? It is, you know, Bodybuilding.com had they've had good information in the past. You're right, lots of advertising. They made a lot of their money selling supplements. They still do, but they're I, Amazon now entered the supplement market. There you go. And Amazon is. Killing the destroyer of Be, all because old businesses. It, because Amazon really didn't sell supplements before. Yeah. So if you wanted body, if you wanted any kind of a muscle building, fat loss type of a supplement, you either went to GNC or Vitamin Shop, or you went to Bodybuilding.com. Bodybuilding.com killed GNC. Like they destroyed right. the profits of those stores because now you have this place online you can order and it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. Well, Amazon's doing that to all the supplement stores. Yep. I, be, number one, because the prices are better for the most part. And number two, because buying stuff on Amazon doc, and Amazon is easy. You just click it and buy and it. Get it. I don't have to enter my credit card, do all this other stuff. So, but I think they're just, they're like, shit, how do we make money now? Now, now for us... As a business, you know, as Mind Pump, we sell programs. That's the main way that we monetize. We, first of all, know how, how important good exercise programming is. We place a lot of time and effort in our programming. It's different than what's out there because, and it's, and it's effective. I think bodybuilding.com programs in the past were just thrown together. Like there wasn't a, you know what I mean? It was just like, cut and paste. Yeah, here's your body part split. Here's your whatever. There wasn't really much, you know, thought that went into it. For us, this is a good thing. They're going to now charge. For their shitty programming, right. it's just going to bring, I think, more people to the well, market. There's, they, there's no real filter with them. I mean, they the way they decide somebody is a bodybuilding.com athlete that comes on, it comes on and actually gives out advice has very little to do with their credentials, their experience, and their knowledge oh, it's how they of, look. of programming. It's yeah, it's how marketable are they? Are you fit? Are you good looking? Do you have a following? And that no is, different than like Shape Magazine or whatever, right? And so yeah. it, I think I think they're fucked because. Because you now you're going to try and pay a monthly subscription to uh, these these crappy workouts that that are people give, that are people are passing out that are not very credible and that's not to say all of them because I know there's always exceptions to the rule and I'm sure there's somebody's listening right now and like, oh no I follow so and so and he's really smart and he gives great information no of course I'm sure there's somebody on bodybuilding.com that's putting out some good information. But they haven't really been this like the excellent authority for a while. I mean, in the early days, you used to be able to go on there and learn about anabolic steroids, learn about they took most of that information off. They kind of, you know, became you know much more commercial. You know what I find that's interesting about all this is, and we're seeing another example. This is just another example of it. You have companies that enter a space. They dominate because there's no competition. Because let's be honest, bodybuilding.com had no competition when they first came on the internet. They... You know, they start to crush it. They do well because they're big, because they're doing well. They become uh, they become this big ship in the ocean that's hard to turn mm -hmm. or their egos get so big. It's like Blockbuster when Netflix went in and said, hey, we want to work with you. And Blockbuster laughed him out of the room. Next thing you know, Blockbuster's bankrupt and Netflix is killing it. It's like bodybuilding.com should have seen this a while ago. They should have seen what was going on. Amazon's crushing us. You know, hey, guys, we need to pivot and and switch. I don't think the selling the programs is the right pivot for them. No, you know at all. I think no, no, no. I'll tell you what you the name can't. You can't go back that way. No, and you could have started that way, and you that's and, right. and possibly have done that a long time ago. But to do that now, that's going to be really tough. When you were, mm -hmm. especially when you were providing most of that stuff for free. The name of the game is media. Yeah. Who's producing the most and the best? You know, media that's out there that, through all platforms. That, right? All platforms. Some people are Facebook people. Some people are Twitter people. Some people are Instagram people. Some yeah. people are getting on the web still and googling stuff. Like, it. You really got to be able to, to provide. It's we're in a content war. Yeah. We're in a con and bodybuilding.com owned the content. Oh yeah. yeah. For a very long time, they own it. But they are the. It's the old guard. You're seeing the changing of, and we're seeing that we're just talking about this with movies, Hollywood, and and Netflix coming in and fucking punking them. You know, now you're seeing Amazon punk fucking bodybuilding.com. So I love it. It's fun to watch. I, 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 learned, I learned so much from watching Scrambling. Com companies like this. This is the type of stuff that I love to follow Was and it pay attention. Didn't, didn't Amazon uh, air uh, the Olympia? Yeah. yeah. So, oh, so they're, they're, sec, they're going sec, in on oh, all, I mean, all talk about shows a, and everything. Talk oh. about a ball that bodybuilding.com just fucking dropped. Oh, yeah. Like they could have like capitalized on that in big ways, but then of course they had their own... You know, uh, you know right. rivalry. They had the, they had the capital, the muscle, the size 
to have really put themselves in a better position um, for this day, and now it's just, in my opinion, it's too late. You got to be shitting your pants if you're them. Oh, Amazon! Amazon has already came in the back door and has got a has got a hold of the bodybuilding industry, and they're only going to squeeze tighter. Like this, you saw them. They're now doing the streaming for the the um, Olympia, which is this one of the smartest things they could do for the last two years, and just watch the way they evolve that. I mean, they got money, they got fuck you money, so they can come in and yeah. do whatever they they want to do, and they're gonna bully bodybuilding.com right out. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see what what we see them doing. But I see a company that's scrambling and trying to figure things out because shit's turning upside down for them. Next question is from S Striker Ten. What are your top three dream podcast guests? Oh wow! Mm, I know Sal's. Dream. I know mine. I don't know Justin's. Yeah. Do you know yours off the top of your head, Justin? My top three like dream guests. Yeah. Uh, no, not top. Just oh, top three. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I was just thinking one. Each. Well, just because okay. we can George go around. Lucas. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's one. Should have known that. Yeah. Shame on me. That. You I'll would agree. ask him some some like such hardcore I, fan questions. You know. That all that you know what I mean? Me and Adam would be like, "What?" No, I would, but at the in same, scene four of you know, yeah, I, I literally would just want to get like pick his brain and get inside as his thought process is how, you know, um, how he he put it all together. Mm-hmm. But anyway, yeah, him him for sure. And then um, I think um, I mean Joe Rogan would be amazing. Fuck, that'd be awesome. You know, like just because I just love what he's he's created and his attitude towards. Um, you know, business in general and just like how everybody comes to him and he's sort of created this this platform that has, has been a game changer. So, um, and then maybe, uh, it's tough, man. Like, um, I don't really look at other, I don't know, I don't have a lot of people I like follow, like, like oh my God, if I had hit them, I would be like, fuck, mm-hmm. you know, like I'll, I'll have to think of my last one. I think so... What's funny is we actually, when we first started the show three years ago, yeah, you said you there were a fur, there were a few podcasts that we looked up to for for a number of reasons, not necessarily because of the content, although this one I'm going to mention, we love their content because they're just fucking hilarious and the great chemistry and all that. But there, when we first started podcasting, we looked at all the podcasts and we we said, okay, what are people doing good that we really like? You know, just because obviously that's our market. And, you know, there's some shows that we really, you know, I use the word modeled after, after not necessarily because we copied them, but because we identified like, oh shit, that's really good. And one of them was the fighter and the kid. Yeah. The chemistry between Love those guys. Brendan, uh, you know, and Brian on the show was so natural and funny and great and conversational that we felt like we kind of had something similar. And so we, we liked, we liked, we mentioned their show so many times. And so I feel like we we just had we just interviewed Brendan Chobb. Yeah, At, collectively that's one of our dream guests just because that's who we talked about. Yeah, for sure. Him and Brian he, he's both definitely one of love them, to yeah. have Brian. Brian on the show. would be the next one. There would you go. love to third. have. Yeah, I connect. I like them both. I think they're both awesome. But Brian, I tend I feel like I connect you more only because some of the stuff he talks about. I feel like I can get in really good conversations with him. Joe Rogan for sure, just because he's the king of podcasting, um, and I think that would be freaking awesome in our space. He kind of is the guy. So that'd be awesome to have him on the show. Um, as far as a third one, I mean, that's a tough one because those, those are the top ones that I can think about. I think I would like, just for controversy's sake, just to see what this person would say and to push their buttons, I would love to have Donald Trump. Oh, <laughs> you, wow. Hey, don't shoot for the stars or anything. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> hey, it's I dream. It. They said dream. I'll yeah. tell you why. That's yeah. a good call, dude. i tell you why. That is a good call. I'll tell you why because- He would I, be fucking awesome I, I feel like to. he won't shy away from whatever anything. I'm going to ask him. Oh, I'm yeah, sure too. And I want to push at him really hard. You could dig deep, yeah. Just to see what would happen, just cause controversy. Yeah. And I feel like it would be exciting. I feel like that, I mean- Obviously, an episode with Donald Trump would go viral, yeah. but uh, I, I mean, it'd be. I just want to, like I said, I want to push this, his buttons just and get see some what insight. See what how he responds. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, no, that's, that's a fucking money that's one, a great, dude, one. great call. So you said Joe, you said Donald, and then who else you say? Uh, you said Brian Callen. Brian oh, and Brian. Callen, okay, yeah. so those are your your three. Um, yeah, that's cool. Everyone did different ones then. So I, I oh, would, I'm sorry, my last one. Can I finish? Because I know go, you're probably go. gonna steal this one. All right, go ahead. Rob Deerdeck. Ah, oh, come on, uh, come on! You take my guy, dude. Sorry, sorry, dude. So, and we, which, we think alike. You guys share a dick or something. For me, either. that's so. Rob Deerdeck is for sure uh, somebody. And what's really fucking awesome is we. That's going to happen. There's no doubt in my mind that's going to happen. Um, the, the the relationship that we've already forged with Chris and 
Uh, we definitely hit it off. I've been talking to him on a regular basis already. Like, so it's pretty exciting for me. That was already a cool thing too, because he was a part of that. Um, and that's, I know, that's another one we've talked about since day one. Right, right. Yep. So I think that one's really cool. And I'm looking forward to the, when that day comes, because I know it will come that we uh, get a chance to interview Rob. And Rob is just a fucking mogul, dude. He's And he's such a funny, cool, and very uh, unassuming, intelligent, brilliant man, right? So mm-hmm. I think and so I think that episode would just be full of gold. So I would love to interview him. Second would be Tony Robbins. I think Tony mm-hmm. Robbins would just... You know, if there's anybody that uh, would inspire me just to talk to them or motivate me, I think that guy would just get my juices flowing. And uh, he's an open book, mm-hmm. and a uh, guy's got so much experience. I think there's there's so many things that I'd want to ask him. So those are my top two. And then my third one, I would want some fucking amazing, brilliant, articulate business persons like a Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk or somebody in that field. Elon would be Fun, right? Somebody like That'd be crazy. Somebody of that caliber of in business that just he because I sit here all the time and speculate what companies are doing, and I love these are the type of books that I love to read and stuff like that. But I I'm willing to bet that when I were to sit down in a room with someone like that, it would just blow my mind because their brain works differently. Like he's probably I think I'm so far ahead the way I'm thinking because I'm reading the right books or paying attention to stuff, and he's probably fucking a hundred steps ahead of me. And so I would love to just absorb that information and knowledge from like somebody that brilliant so those are probably my uh those top hey three. some of the some of the ones we mentioned are, are relative relatively realistic you know what i mean most of yeah. them most of them are pretty realistic well, we're so. one per, there's one person away from most yeah. of those right so chris to rob and uh brendan brian to callen. Joe, brian to joe and callen yeah, so, yeah. no absolutely awesome so, yep so check this out go to youtube check out our channel mind pump tv we post 365 videos every single year and more so we put a ton of video ton of content on there subscribe and share our videos have people check it out thank you for listening to mind pump if your goal is to build and shape your body dramatically improve your health and energy and maximize your overall performance check out our discounted rgb super bundle at mindpumpmedia.com the rgb super bundle includes maps anabolic maps performance and maps aesthetic Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.